Today, let's talk about the CMA philosophy. And this is something that I've adhered to for a very long time. I don't always remember to do this, but first let's unpack what CMA stands for. CMA stands for cover my ass or cover my behind. The idea is making sure that you have got all of the documentation, the authorization, the approval, everything that you need to be doing what you're doing. It's something that I started way back in the corporate world when I was working with managers, bosses, etc., who were asking me to do things. And I created a CMA folder where I could put anything that I had been asked to do in there as a backup. Therefore, if somebody asked me, why did you do this? What was the reasoning for doing X, Y, and Z? Then I could always go to the CMA folder and produce the specific email, the specific authorization for any action that I did. Now, it really sucks that you have to do that in corporate and it's why I'm not in corporate anymore. But unfortunately, there was an environment then where you would essentially be picked on if you did anything deemed to be wrong by any other manager. There were so many people involved, so many management involved that if one person asked you to do something and then another one came at you telling you off for that, the CMA folder was brilliant because then you could produce the relevant evidence. This manager requested this from me, blah, 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 so on and so forth. And unfortunately, I've kind of had to carry that on. Instead of having multiple managers now in business, we tend to have multiple customers. And within those customers are multiple people involved, multiple decision makers. Now, it's ideal on any project to have one point of contact, one main decision maker, etc. But that's not always going to be the case. So if per client you can create some form of CMA folder, then I would certainly advise it. Therefore, when you're asked to do something specific, when something has been authorized, get that into your CMA folder. You don't just need a CMA folder, however. Think about it with the contracts that you are building. Think about it with the specs that you are creating for a web build. Everything that you are going to create needs to be covered in some sort of discovery document, in a website specification document, so that you can then say, this is the reason we built this, the way we built it, and here is the authorization. The idea here is you are covering your ass so that when push comes to shove and a client is pushing for something that has not been authorized, that's not been approved, that's not being paid for, you can produce all of the relevant evidence to say, no, this is what we were to deliver. Or alternatively, if you made a development decision and went for it and the client challenges you on that, again, you can go to your contract, you can go to your CMA folder and you can produce the relevant evidence. It's not about being a show off and saying, ha ha, I told you so. It's about protecting yourself, protecting yourself from doing extra work, protecting yourself from potential client relationship breakdowns. Now, I've called it CMA for years. I should probably call it something a bit more nice and a bit more positive, but I just wanted to share that with you because it actually came up in a Facebook conversation. Now, speaking of Facebook, if you are not part of our Facebook group, head on over to wpinnovator.com forward slash group and come and have a private conversation with us in there. Alternatively, let us know how you're covering your butt in the comments below. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.